For today's video, Mr. Tallfeather is on transitional paleo points. What define transitional paleo points for us? Well, transitional paleo point means that they were in a phase of coming into this at lateral thrower, which would have been the next uh, weapon in their arsenal. They had learned that by making a smaller, more narrow point. And using the lateral thrower, again, they could have uh, greater distances, wouldn't have to get as close to the animal, uh, also penetrated much deeper, much safer for the hunter, you might say, in order to be able to back off from these large animals. Uh, these three points here at the top of the case are Dalton's. And again, uh, as in all paleo and transitional paleo points, the base will be a concave base. And they also were heavily ground uh, in the concave of the base and also up to the break of the shoulder. All of these Daltons are heavily ground, very smooth on the ends, again to accommodate the lashing where they, they would not cut the lashing. But as you notice in transitional points, there is no fluting of the point. Some Daltons you will see, even this point here has a slight flute, but never running up the length of the blade. Uh, and this is another Dalton which has been heavily worn, uh, just like we do, they use uh, uh, these arrowheads until they get all the use out of them so you know this point could have been as long as these other points but through time and use and breakage and repair then it gets another thing down. about all your paleo and transitional paleo points they have parallel flaking and what that means is they would start from this edge and roll over to this edge all your flaking will be from across the face of a point it will not be random flaking the clovises the cumberlands the daltons all have what's called oblique flaking. They start at the edge and come to the center or medium ridge of a point. And they're always parallel uh, to each other, never random. All right. What other transitional points do you have today to show us? We also have what's known as a big sandy. Again, you'll notice the concave base. And instead of making weak shoulders, they begin to side notch them, which made it uh, tighter to the shaft. Uh, it didn't work its way loose as much when you have the notches. Also, it freed you up to have a longer cutting edge when you didn't have the shaft in the way with the fluting. Uh, these, these two here are what's considered big sandies, and uh, these, three here, these two here are considered to be big sandies. These three in the middle are what's called Graham Cave. Uh, they're a, a little bit different from the big sandies in the fact of the way that the tangs are made at the base. They are more triangular uh, to the point. Also, the ground caves, like other transitional paleo points, will always be basal ground, always be ground up to uh, the notches on the sides. So the, the ground caves would be ground, but the big sandies wouldn't, so that would be an, they would be an earlier point, correct? Right. The ground caves are definitely uh, the earlier transitional paleo points where the big sandies, even though having a similar form, uh, were not basal ground. All right. And what's this last one on the end here? Uh, well, we didn't talk about the Greenbrier. Okay. Uh, again, it's another transitional paleo point. Uh, has been heavily ground at the base. Uh, this is in the same association time period as the Daltons. Uh, the Daltons were more Midwestern. You'll find uh, the heavier concentration of Daltons in the northern Arkansas area, uh, Iowa, and Ohio areas, whereas the Greenbriers you'll find mostly in the southeast. Uh, along that same time period, transitional paleo, but just a little bit, bit different form, where the Daltons have higher shoulders, the Greenbriars were uh, weak side notched, but always basal ground, and sometimes they'll even have a slight flute. And then we also have an Etley point, uh, which is found uh, in the southeast, uh, scattered through the Midwest. It's also a transitional paleo point, and if you notice, it's much like uh, the base of the Graham Caves and Big Sandies with the way the tangs are made, but it's not convex at the bottom, but it too will also be basal ground all the way around the edge up to the hafting this area. This corner piece here. This point is what's considered to be a redstone. It does have weak flutes uh, on either side. It too also will be basal ground. It's a transitional paleo point. As you can see, the base also is concave, has the auriculate ears, uh, like other paleo and transitional paleo pieces. Uh, the redstone is found only in the southeastern United States with heavy concentrations in the area of uh, Alabama, uh, southern Tennessee, and northern Florida. Well, this certainly is a 